Okay, so we're live for our creative media session. Just I'm gonna just gonna hold for a, a couple of seconds just to let people log into the uh, stream. Uh, if you're here, if you could just put a comment in the chat for me on the right hand side, just to let me know that you can hear me, please. That'd be brilliant. Excellent. Thank you very much. That's great. Fantastic. So there might be a few, up here, a couple more people trying to trying to come in, but we will make a start. Um, so morning, uh, welcome to Mid Kent College. My name's Steve, uh, and I'm going to be your host uh, for this next session, next 30 minutes or so, where we're going to be looking at our creative media program. So thanks for signing up to find out more about that. Uh, and I've got Ross with me today, uh, who's from the creative media team, and Ross is going to be taking you through uh, those programs and answering your questions uh, a little bit later on today. Um, now, if you were coming to to one of our normal open events. The, the feedback that we usually get is that people love having the chance to have a walk around of the campus and, and, and see, see what the uh, buildings are like here. But they also really like the opportunity to have a conversation with the tutors and to ask their questions and find out more about the specific courses. Now, obviously at the moment, uh, we can't bring you into the campus uh, for a walk around, uh, but what I can do is give you direct access to Ross. So uh, if you've got any questions today, if you could pop those into the chat panel uh, on the right hand side as we go through then we'll pick those up for you. Uh, we've got Sue and Haley sitting in the background today who are helping us with the chat too so uh, they'll be picking up on your questions there and uh, I'll be putting your questions to Ross uh, as we go through this morning too. Um, so uh, at the top of your screen uh, just so we know who we've got in the call today you'll see there's a, a, a tab that says polls um, so if you wouldn't mind clicking on that for me, please. Uh, and then, yeah, brilliant. Someone's already answered that. But if you wouldn't mind just answering that poll for me too, it just gives us a feel for who we've got uh, on the chat today. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. So Ross, just so you know, we've got a, a, a mix of people that have applied uh, for creative media programs already, um, hopefully looking to start in September, uh, and others who are here just to find out a little bit more information. So um, thank you for your feedback there. And we'll try and make sure that we, we capture all of that as we go through today for you. Um, what I'm going to do to get us started is uh, just play you a short video uh, from Simon Cook. Simon's our principal uh, and uh, it's just a bit of a welcome to today's session. So I'll just play that now for you. Hello there, I'm Simon and I'm the principal of Mid Kent College. It's great to be able to talk to you and uh, I so wish I, was be able, I would be able to talk to you in person but virtually hopefully your opportunity to get to know a little bit more about the college will help you with your decisions that you need to make. So over the next 30 minutes in this virtual open event you're going to have an opportunity to meet one of the tutors from your chosen subject area. Really make the most of that time to find out what it means for you. Um, ask some questions. No question is a silly question. Please ask whatever question you've got. Take some notes, but make sure that you've got the info that you really need to make that decision about what you want to do in September. And if you're really not sure what you want to do, then you're not the only person. There are lots of people every year that we see, it won't be any different in the current year under these current circumstances, who really don't know what they want to do. There might be even some of you who are thinking you really don't know what to do because you see what's going on in the world and you're not quite sure what job, job prospects there may be. By the time you finish your programme, the world will be a different place again and there will be many more opportunities then that may not exist now. So talk to our staff about it. And also don't be frightened if you don't know what you want to do. Have a look at some of our other sessions. Come into other sessions and see. What's really important, and one thing I say to everybody who comes into the college, you must feel comfortable with the people that you're going to be sharing your next few months and years with. And I want you to feel comfortable that you're going to be able to flourish and thrive as a person, not just study a qualification, but flourish and thrive as a person with those people you talk to. So if you don't get any of the answers that you think you need in the virtual session, we've got a brilliant team on our course inquiries and we've got a brilliant team in our careers uh, office who will help you navigate the language, what options there are, and for you, what's the right thing to do, um, which is a question we often get asked every year. I hope you enjoy your session, and I really, really hope that I get to see you very, very soon at the college, and uh, we look forward to welcoming you with us in September, if not in person, virtually, that's for sure. Good luck.
Okay, well, thanks to Simon for uh, recording that for us. Uh, so what I'm just going to do, Ross, is uh, bring your slides up onto screen. And if you could just bear with me a second, I'll sort your microphone out and then I will just hand over to you. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Hi. So, hi, guys. Um, welcome. I'm the curriculum manager for um, Creative Media. So, I'm in charge of the entire media department, um, both at Medway and at Maidstone, um, all the level two courses and the level three courses that we're going to be talking about today. Um, just so you know, we don't do a level one qualification strictly under Creative Media, but we do have links to the art and design courses and the IT. Um, courses. So if you are a level one qualification, you can go into those courses. Um, but we specifically look at uh, level two and level three pathways. So all our courses run under what's called UAL. And um, you can see on the top right hand corner of my slide, that's uh, University of Arts London awarding body. Um, so it's the same kind of equivalence to any BTECs um, that you would do. Um, level two is equivalent to GCSEs and level three is equivalent to A levels. So that's how it works. So if you were want to go to university, for example, then our level three UAL qualifications uh, are still um, relevant for that. Um, so you can still go to university from the level three courses. First of all, I want to talk about the level two qualification. So this is creative media production and technology. Um, the um, course itself is uh, eight units long you are introduced to multiple skills so the idea of our level two is it's an introduction to our, our level three pathways so you have an introduction to um, the overall um, different pathways that we have so it's photography video and games design we have research and audiences that we look at the importance of uh, research and also how you create products for an audience our main focus is on visual, interactive and audio production, and we do those through multiple different platforms. So we can do that through um, video, we can do that through photography, um, but we also look at interactive. So we look at um, how we can um, use interactive um, software um, to actually um, produce interactive products for um, a client or for, for yourselves. So it could be a website, but it also could potentially be um, a product like um, Bandersnatch, for example, that we've done previously at level three. So there's lots of opportunities that we have that we ask you to explore within level two and find out exactly what it is specifically that you would like to do um, at level three and, and also potentially higher. Um, we then assess a final major project. So all the units, uh, so all seven units that we look at at the start of the year and all the way through to about Easter time um, is roughly, but it's about past fail. So all we were looking to do is train you on specific areas and you simply work on that work um, and we give you an indicative grade of whether you're potentially going towards a pass, a merit or a distinction grade. And we give you feedback throughout the entire process as well. Then we'd look at the, your FMP. Um, an FMP is your final project to kind of showcase your skill sets in that particular area. So you can choose um, any kind of product that you want to produce. So it could be a photograph or a series of photographs. It could be a video. It could be um, graphic design. It could be an animation. It could be anything that you choose to do. But the idea is we then assess that based upon our um, criteria that we have for our FMP. And it uses the skill sets that you've used throughout the entire process. So as I said at the bottom there, you've got a mixture of animation, photography and video production that we teach you at level two. And the idea as you progress um, through that, we would then move you on to a level three qualification. So level three, again, creative media production and technology, again, UAL. Um, this one has 13 units, but this is over two years. The level two is over one year. You do eight units in the first year and five units in the second year. Um, the idea being that obviously within your second year, you are very much concentrated on one particular area. So there's a lot more detail that you do at level three, year two, than you would do at level three, year one. Year one is more of a skills-based kind of exercise, making sure that you're getting your skills up, whereas year two is perfecting those skills and making sure that you're doing something specific for what it is that you want to be doing. The courses are a mixture of theory and practical. Um, so that is really important that you understand that is that there are a, a, we ask you to do a lot of theory work um, that underpins your skill sets, understand uh, underpins your knowledge of a particular area. But at the same time, we are make, getting you to make things. So it's not like a school project in which you just study it. Uh, I've had many conversations with people before where you've just looked at creating an advert but never actually created it, or you've looked at creating a horror film but you never actually created it. 
on our courses. We look at understanding horror films, adverts, lots of things that are already out there, for example. And then we start putting your put that into practice. So you then go and make that particular product. Again, each year is assessed by an FMP. So it is a case of you will work through your units as a pass fail, giving you feedback throughout the entire process. And then you showcase your skill sets at the end of the year on an FMP project. And again, that's up for you to decide about how you're going to interact with it. With a level three course, because it's pathway driven, which I'll get onto in a second, the idea is that you would have to stick within that pathway. Um, but the idea is what you do within that um, FMP is completely up to you and how you interpret the brief that you're given. So as I said, the level three courses run on a video photography and game design pathway. You can't you can go between the two at the start of the year. Um, so you might think that you want to do video or photography, for example. You start on the photography course and you want to go and you decide that you want to do video more or vice versa or game design. It's up to you within the six weeks, but you will be put onto that one pathway and therefore you, there will be no fluctuation between uh, the two uh, the three pathways. So level three video, um, our main uh, product at the moment is we, we work Adobe um, Creative Cloud throughout most of our courses, but the main software that we use for level three video is Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, we do have DaVinci Resolve on the um, Max as well, but the idea is that we don't teach it. DaVinci Resolve is potentially moving in an industry as a new editing platform that is um, gaining speed. So we go along with industry. Um, so Adobe Premiere Pro is the one that we use at the moment. Um, but DaVinci, as it's as it's continuously building up, we're looking at um, giving you a chance to explore that as well. So it's on there. We don't necessarily teach it. We do know it. We don't teach it in lessons. We can help you develop it if you wanted to. Um, and the good thing about Resolve um, is that it's free for you to download at home as well. So there are good things about why we do that. Um, but Premiere Pro is where we mainly use for our video courses. The way we approach our course is teaching you industry standard approaches. So all of our staff um, have got industry experience. They've worked in the industry in some way. Um, so what we're doing is we're training you for a qualification as a part of an awarding body. But at the same time, we're also training you for industry. So we're giving you what you would expect to do um, in the future um, if you were to leave us and go into industry. What kind of things would you need to do um, when you go into the industry? We base our teaching on project work. Um, so you would learn your skill sets um, based on project work that we set you throughout the year. Again, like, we, you, like you would do it in industry, you would be given a project and you will ask to react to that project. So we teach you the skill sets for that. And then we look at and help you develop your project work throughout the time that you're with us. Um, and project works can include things like interactive videos, as I said before, about Bandersnatch and the um, Bear Grylls things. We um, we actually use a bit of software that helps us create our own interactive videos. So it's not through YouTube, but through their piece of software. Um, so it means that you're creating a short film um, that has multiple narratives throughout it. So it's not just a case of you create one narrative. We're actually getting you to think of multiple narratives that then the audience then has to choose through. We create documentaries, music videos, short films, uh, and obviously throughout that we choose sound as well. But based on every single year, we change what we do um, based upon the industry and based upon how the um, industry is actually moving. So I can't tell you exactly what we're going to be doing uh, next year uh, because we haven't planned it yet. We're planning it uh, as the start of next week, um, but it will be reactive to what the industry is doing at this precise moment in time. Um, but generally speaking, we'll look at documentaries, music videos and short films as a whole um, to teach you those basic skill sets. Um, level three photography. We talk about obviously the principles of photography. What we like to do within photography is it help you develop your own practice. So you will have a certain skill set that you want to keep to. So you'll you'll keep developing that with our tutors. Um, and so it could be anything between um uh, working in the studios, um, doing um, product photography, who could be fashion photography, you could go outside and do landscapes. It's completely up to you how you want to react to briefs that we give you, but we help you develop your own practice. And also, if you have got your own camera, we'd also teach you how to use those professionally as well. We do a mixture of sketchbook and online portfolios. The vast majority of our courses are online portfolios. But because some of our students like to do more of the art side of photography, we also allow our students to do um, all their work in sketchbooks if they wish. Um, so we do have a mixture of those. 
Um, and for photography, we look at Nikon and Canon cameras. Um, Nikon, generally speaking, is at Maidstone, and Canon, generally speaking, is at Medway. But we do switch just so that all students have an idea about how each camera works and the differences between each manufacturer. And then for level three games, um, it's new for the Medway course, um, but we've also been running it at Maidstone for two years now. Um, we use a mixture of Unity, Maya, and Mudbox as our main platforms. Um, you will be taught a mixture of animation and 3D modeling, um, but also added onto that is our 3D art. Um, so you, if you're interested in concept art, or concept drawing, character drawings or, or, or design, um, we'll also be doing that. We don't just, even though the course is called Games Design, we, we don't just teach you how to create games. If you've played games, you know how many people are in those credits. It's quite a lot of people. So by the end of the course, you will not be creating a game, but you'll have an idea about how you would in the future work with a large group of people. But we also give you multi-skill development. So you're looking at how your 3D skills can be used. And we use and we work with industry to develop those. So we work with a company called uh, Dovetail Games to look at the game side of things. And we also work with a company called Dirty, who also use the 3D um, design packages, but they're doing it in a very different way. Uh, and so we're using your skills that you've learned on the course to give yourself multi opportunities when you leave us um, to go to university or obviously directly into industry using that same 3D skills that you'd learn on the course. Uh, and we also use a mixture of computer and traditional um, techniques. So we aren't just going to get you sitting on the in front of a computer and doing it. There are um, skills that we teach you that are traditional. So your basic drawing skills, even if you're not very good at it, the idea is that we're giving you the basic skill sets to understand how you're creating it and then we'd move it to the computer to then actually create it through that. Um, equipment. Um, we have a vast array of equipment. I've got a camera behind me here. I've got quite a few since we've been locked down. I've been taking a few home. Um, but the idea is that mo we don't expect you to have any equipment uh, at home. Everything that you're trained on, you are then free to use once we're happy that you know how to how to use it. Um, so it goes from stills cameras and we've got a Lumix GH5 that we've um, re uh, recently bought. So that's for our video courses to use um, DSLR um, uh, images. So they have a different skill set that they've been learned uh, that they could be being taught. We have video cameras, both for our level three and level um, level twos. Uh, we teach you lighting skills. Um, all our computers, uh, all our um, creative courses are based on Mac computers, uh, other than our games design course, which is based on PCs. Um, and I've got, we also have a mixture of tablets that we use. So we use a traditional graphics tablet, but as you can see on the screen there, we also have. Um, graphics tablets that are multi the, the secondary screens. So you draw directly on the graphics tablet on the screen itself. So it depends on your preference as to what you want to use. Uh, and we have that facility to kind of change up, but the equipment is all there ready for you to use as you need to and once we trained you on it. Facilities, um, we have lots of facilities both at uh, both sites. As I said before, um, our um, courses run on Mac computers, generally speaking. At the Medway campus, um, they've got the green screen room there. We've got a few developments in the green screen room, um, but that is our TV studio. Um, and we will be, um, you'd be using that as part of a TV studio that gives you um, facility to uh, interact with multi-camera setups. But we're also going to be using that space as a um, set room so you can create um, your own sets within that room. Um, on the middle bottom, you have the gallery room, which connects to the TV studio. So you'll be trained on how to use the equipment for multi-camera setup. And then on the right-hand side, you have the um, photography studio at UCM. Uh, we have pentagraphs from the ceiling. It's a um, university standard um, um, photo studio. And the idea is we train you how to use that professionally as well. So there's, pent as I say, pentagraphs uh, and also the flash cameras that we teach how to use. There's two backgrounds in there. And we also are, have a new photography studio that we've just been uh, renovating at uh, the Medway campus as well. Um, opportunities. Um, all our tutors are industry skilled, as I said before, so they've all worked in the industry. We have to do that as part of UAL, so we have to submit our CVs to UAL for us to be able to deliver the qualification. We work continuously with industry to make sure that our courses are up to standard. So um, every three months I have an employee forum in which I get um, some of the companies you see there and universities together, and we discuss how we're going to develop our courses um, year on year. 
Um, we also do that for our industry placements as well. So as part of our course, you have to do industry placement. So we work with those companies to ensure um, that we have projects that you can do or obviously links that we can work with industries to get you some placements. Um, we do trips and visitors um, come to us as well. So most of the, most of the companies there um, come and visit us on our, our students on a regular basis um, to give talks. Um, and also we do trips. So um, every single year we do some kind of trip, obviously, Current situations might change that, um, but the idea is that we do um, we do trip every single year. We do some kind of international trip um, for our level three students, and we also do TV um, trips, TV, TV studio trips um, for our level twos. So there's opportunities out there for you to get um, if you if you wish. Um, we also have uni university visits and close links with universities. So there's obviously opportunities that you can understand even from a level two perspective your opportunities when you go forward and we'll give you links and we work with a lot of universities to help us structure our courses um, but also um, help us develop our courses and give a talks um, regularly throughout the year. As I said we work with industry continuously throughout the course to structure our, um, our curriculum but also come in and give talks. But we're also looking at how the reality of working in the industry works and we look at keeping your skills up so that you can potentially start your own business. And quite a few of our students who choose not to go to university will actually start up their own businesses. And so we give you those skill sets as well. And that's me done. Much for that, Ross. Um, loads of really interesting information there. And we, we've got some questions coming through in the chat, which I'm going to put to you in a second as well. Uh, but just as a reminder for everybody else, while um, I'm asking Ross these questions, and I've got a couple in my back pocket to ask you as well, Ross, um, while, we're, while we're talking, if there's anything else that you want uh, want to ask Ross, um, then please just pop it in the chat. We'll, we'll pick that up with him. So, Ross, you, you talked about um, a lot of the equipment that our, our students use and have access to. Um, and one of the questions is in two parts so i'll give you both parts at the same time so will we be able to take equipment home if we're working remotely um, and that's tied to uh, the idea of uh, blended learning and what's that what that will look like for our students in terms of access to equipment if they're they're doing some work that's completely off-site from home um, okay so um, the answer to that at the moment is that we're looking at planning um, starting next week, as I said before, and we're starting to look at how we're going to deliver that based upon the current situations we're in. Um, the, sh the short answer is we don't know. Um, that's a discussion that I have to have with our facilities team because essentially all the equipment that we have is the ownership of the entire college and therefore has to be done within the facilities team. Um, and so at this precise moment, um, the need for it, we don't know and the requirements of it, we're going to start developing it as part of planning. The, the idea is that, generally speaking, all of our equipment is bookable by our students, but they have to have been trained in it first. So the idea is potentially we'll have um, some time in which we'll be able to train students on the equipment that we're going to be using, and then once we're happy with that, they'll then be able to take it home. So the answer is not sure at the moment, but probably they'll be able to at some time during the time of the year but we don't always give out kit um, at the start of the year um, for all new students because we're not happy that they're not trained on it just yet for them to take it out okay but, yeah. brilliant thank you ross um hopefully that answers your question but but feel free to to pop something else in the chat if we haven't quite covered off the angle that you, you were hoping we would um i think linked to that uh, we've got another question about what will happen on the first day with starting the level three photography course um i get i i'm assuming um that that what's behind that again is is what september going to look like in terms of yeah. new students and starting programs um so you've already said a little bit about that is there anything else you wanted to add to that before we move on i mean in in general we are as as I say we're in planning at the moment we're going to be using what's called blended learning um, so the idea is that we will have lessons that will be taking place in college how that looks and the health and safety um, of, of that is obviously being discussed at this precise moment in time so there will be opportunities for us to have lessons in college potentially um, but we are also planning for the eventuality of having to teach lessons at home and we're looking at how we're going to be doing that as i say part of that is going to be um, starting next week when we start looking at the planning of that and how we're going to do it so that's all of our creative media courses but every single creative media course we're looking at how we can deliver a qualification to you in a similar way as we would do even if you were in college so there's no reason why we're going to change anything we're going to be doing you'll still be getting exactly the same education as you would do if you were in 
college, um, it's just that we're changing our approaches. So in terms of what you're going to be learning and how you're going to be learning it, as much as is physically possible, would be exactly the same experience as you would normally get in college. It's just that we've got to change our approaches, which is not part of what you need to know. We're, de we're developing that as we go. Cool. Thanks for that, Ross. Um, I, I, just to add on to what Ross has said there, I think the, um, the the sort of overarching principle for what September will look like is that we want to keep everyone safe. Um, so, you know, you, you can imagine it's a big challenge for us. We've got about 8,000 students a year that we work with and trying to bring everybody on site to do face-to-face -face teaching and learning in the way that we would love to. You know, don't get us wrong, we would love to have you here and to have our staff and students working together in the way that they normally would. Uh, but all the time we need to keep social distancing regulations in place, that makes it really difficult for us to, to operate in the way that we would like to. Um, so, as Ross said, what, we, what we're looking towards uh, and what we've asked all of our curriculum teams to look at is a, a is a model of blended learning from September. Um, now that might mean as well that we make adjustments to the timetables that you would normally see. So obviously we, we need to control quite carefully the number of people that we've got on our campuses at any given at any given moment in time, but also the number of students that we've got in uh, a particular classroom or workshop space at any any point in time as well. So you know we're looking at all of those timetabling issues at the moment, uh, but it, it might be that um, you know where over the last year your typical week would have been three and a half days uh, on campus in college your week your typical week next year might look slightly different to that and you you know you'll still be doing the same amount of work uh, but the amount of time that you're actually on campus may be reduced uh, all the time that we're under regulations um, obviously we have to be reactive to to what's going on around us as well so you know hopefully that situation will change and we'll be able to 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 um, get more and more time uh, face to face in classrooms as the year year moves on but certainly for September uh, we think uh, courses will start uh, but it will be that mixture of face-to-face -face time in a classroom supported by uh, working virtually at home and you know what you, there, there are so many resources available digitally as well um, that you know using those has always been something we've encouraged our students to do I think the main difference from September is that we'll be putting time in your timetables that allow you to do that so it's not something you're doing on top of what you would normally do at college I hope that makes sense yeah. Um, so we've got another question. What's the last date to apply for the level three games design course, Ross? How are we looking in terms of, of filling up? We are have, have been inundated with all our courses. So the very simple answer is as soon as is physically possible. OK, but, that's brilliant. But anyhow, if I deliver that in September, if I deliver it in November, March, whenever I'm delivering it, I always say as soon as is physically possible. Um, because if you are, if we're in a situation where we have too many students on a qualification, we will um, still interview you, but we'll put it on what's called a waiting list, uh, and we'll wait to see how many students are applying for those qualifications. Um, and then, uh, when it comes to enrolment, if you're on a waiting list and we didn't get the numbers we were looking for, then we'll look to bringing you back on the course. So, as soon as is physically possible to apply for any courses at any point. Great. Um, Ross, I've got a couple of questions for you as well, if that's OK. Um, so you mentioned the industry experience of the tutors and, you know, I think it was really helpful that you said that uh, actually it's part of our accreditation to deliver those qualifications that our, our tutors need to keep their industry skills up. Can you give us a bit of a flavour of, of the background of, of the people that we've got in the team and, and the industry experience that they bring to our students? Yeah, I mean, every single member of staff, as I said, has worked in the industry, um, and that can be someone from um, who's worked in as a, as a production assistant or what's known as a runner, um, and worked in, in as that position for quite a while, and then gone into education. Um, our um, photography lecturer, for example, at Medway, um, is fresh out of the industry, so he's worked on films like um, Mary Poppins um, and Men in Black and things like that, um, and so he's come out straight, straight from under, his skill sets of university as a photographer. He's used those skill sets to go into industry and work on the camera equipment. And now he's teaching people how to use cameras as a photographer. Um, we have people who have worked in Soho in post-production houses for a long time, um, worked at BBC, um, all over the place. So all of our students in terms of game design, our game design tutor um, has worked in industry as an animator, for many many um, different companies including Sony um, so every single member of staff that we have here has worked in industry in some form and actually the vast majority of our students uh, of our staff have actually worked in quite 
good jobs uh, within the industry as well. So every single member of staff has that industry experience and that's what we teach you. We teach you how the industry works and how you're moving forward. So it might be a case of, you might find a tutorial on YouTube, for example, that teaches you a specific technique in a different way, but actually the way we're teaching you is how, what the industry would expect you to do rather than what a tutorial would expect you to do. Um, so we're teaching you those skills um, and what to expect when you go into an industry rather than just getting a, a qualification um, sure. out of it at the end. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, what I'm going to do is just take us on to the, the very last bit of our session today, uh, which, uh, you know, I'm going to whiz through because our, our time has gone. Uh, but frankly, you know, if, if uh, people come here to listen to you, Ross, they haven't come to listen to me. So I'm, I'm glad that we spent more time uh, listening to you, to be honest with you. Um, but I am just going to jump to some of the, the sort of more frequently asked questions that we get. Um, one is that, you know, we talk about study programmes and Ross, you've already talked about the fact that um, um, our programs incorporate an element of industry placement because we want people to get that experience of putting their skills into practice in real life uh, and in a work setting. Uh, so when you come to us, you complete the study program. Uh, so it's got four elements. You've got your technical and professional qualification, which in this example is, is the media element of what you do in your time at college. Uh, we wrap some support with your English and maths around that too. Uh, now, what that support looks like depends on your previous level of, uh, of achievement uh, with your English and maths. Um, it might be uh, that you're looking at uh, some functional skills to go alongside your program. It might be that you didn't quite get what you wanted in your GCSEs and we're supporting you towards resits. It might be that um, you got your GCSEs and we, we put a little bit of support and challenge in just to help you keep those skills sharp. Because, you know, for, for me, some, some of those math skills, if I don't use them on a regular basis, I, I lose them. Uh, so it's about keeping those things fresh because that they're the kind of skills that employers tell us uh, they want their staff to have. You've got your industry placement which we said is, is something where you go out and spend a significant chunk of time out working with a local business uh, in, in a field that's related to your area of study. Uh, and then you have a, a progress and performance tutor who will uh, work alongside your program with lots of personal development activity. Uh, it, you know, that could be anything ranging from uh, sort of health and well-being to work ready interviews, all kinds of things that, that wrap around uh, your program. I just want to, uh, we, we touched on a couple of these very briefly, but I just want to go through uh, these final FAQs just for a bit of clarity. Um, how many days a week could you expect to be in college? I think I mentioned that previously in a normal year, a full-time program, if you were 16 to 18, we would expect to see you on, on campus for sort of three, three and a half days a week. That may look slightly different in September, but we'll keep you posted with that uh, as we go through and, and timetables get uh, decided. Um, can you study more than one subject? Well, no, um, this this isn't like uh, you, you sort of traditional A levels where you get to choose a mix. Uh, when you come to us, we have we give you a really focused experience on that technical and professional qualification, uh, which you've decided is the route that you want to go on in terms of your career. So um, it is just one subject. Uh, Ross has already talked about the fact that there are progression routes from programs into uh, higher level study at university, and our level three programs uh, do uh, qualify for UCAS points to help you with those applications as well. In terms of what the different levels mean, I think Ross covered this a little bit earlier on. Broadly speaking, a level two is equivalent to GCSE uh, and a level three is equivalent to A level. Um, I think if you're not sure uh, where you're going to fit or if you're looking at eligibility criteria for some of our programs and you're not sure what level you're going to fall in, our advice would be apply anyway. Um, it's our responsibility to make sure that you're on the right course and that you're studying at the right level for you. Um, so if you put your application in, uh, once we have a chat with you uh, at your interview, we can help make the right decision uh, for you there. Um, in terms of uh, programs and cost, if you're 16 to 18, then these are government funded programs. Um, if you're nine, which means you, we, you, you're not charged directly for them. Uh, if you're 19 plus, uh, then fees are available, but there are concessions and there's support available for you uh, with those fees as well. Uh, and we talked about the deadline to apply. It's, you know, the most important thing really is to get that application in as soon as possible uh, so that we can get you your telephone interview with um, either Ross or a member of the team and get your place uh, secure for September. Just before I wrap up, Ross, um, we, we've got a question that's just come through. So the level three, uh, apparently it says that level three is one year on the website, but you said it's two. Can we just clarify that? Yep. So level three combined as an extended diploma is a um, full two year qualification. The reason it says one year is a, is a fault and we're looking at that. Uh, but the idea is that you are signed up to a one year qualification at level three to start with. 
um, and then based upon your performance but also whether you want to move afterwards um, that means that you're actually having an opportunity to leave at the end of the first year if you chose to you'd still leave with equivalent a levels um, but the idea is you have that option um, at, the, at the end of the first year but we expect every single level three student who applies for us um, to do a full two-year course so I put that into context uh, our level three video course at the moment runs um 74 students i think it is at the moment and two students one on each site is going to be leaving at the end of this year and that's it um, so mo the vast majority of our students will do a full two-year course so level three is two years not one okay it's a great question though and, and thanks very much for spotting that and, and pointing it out um just before we wrap up then if you go to the top of your screen on the right hand side you'll see that there's a tab called handouts um and before you leave the call today um it, it's probably worth you downloading some of those so there's there's some uh more faqs things that we haven't perhaps had the time to touch on today um you've got uh, a guide to how to submit your application as well and it talks you through that, that application process and some faqs about student finance because there are bursaries and and other financial support that's available to students as well and that document will give you a little bit more information on that so in terms of what happens next uh thank you to all of you who have submitted your application already that's brilliant um for those of you who haven't yet um as ross said earlier on the, the courses are popular and they fill up quickly so the best advice we can give you is to get that application in as soon as possible uh, and if you use your predicted grades uh, when you're filling in the application that'll be fantastic if we need to have a conversation with you about the level based on the grades that you actually get at the end of August, we can do that. But whatever happens when you when those results come through, uh, don't panic, work with us and we'll make sure that we can help you get onto the right program. Thank you for your time today. And thank you, Ross, for giving your time to come and talk to us as well. Um, if you need any further assistance after today, um, our course inquiries team. Uh, so they're, and they're the people that have been looking after you in the chat window by today, today as well, by the way. Um, very knowledgeable. Um, lots of experience in helping people find the information they need about our programs you can reach those, them on the phone uh, on 01634 40 20 20. Uh, there's a live chat facility on our website that goes straight through to the course information team as well or you can drop them an email on course inquiries at midkent.ac.uk so thanks again for your time i hope it's been useful you will get uh, a recording of this webinar sent to you probably within about half an hour of the session finishing as well so if there's something that we rushed past or or you want to go back and listen to again you have the opportunity to do that or if you've got friends or family who are interested in what you're going to come to study or perhaps might be interested in a media program themselves that's a link that you're able to share on to let other people see as well so thank you all for your time uh, and we look forward to seeing you in September thank you